a show that's so hot it's countdown to meltdown because we have got the knack. Without wasting any more time, let's keep a promise. Live across Australia, it's Roger Maduras. <laughs> What you were about Something called love made me want to find out Did not think you could ever care But I'm out of control Cause you're taking me there I couldn't believe our love would last It's coming on stronger Coming on so much faster Getting used to it Welcome to Countdown. Tonight we got the Angels, my sex, and a brother of a guy I used to work with. So check it out. And right now we got Kiss, and I was made for loving you. Feel the magic, something that's right. 
That was Kiss and I was made for loving you. And right now, it's time for Chart Busters of Australia. The knack of already gone platinum in America and gold in Australia. This week, my Sharona made a crash taboo at 12 nationally. And yet the knack showed up at number 14. Here's a salute to meat pies, football, kangaroos, and holding cars. It's number one in Brisbane, Melbourne, and Hobart, and Adelaide. And it's just entered the Sydney charts. And also went up 23 places in Perth. Up there, Kazali. Disco's Donna Summer's Bad Girls album has been in the top 10 for eight weeks. This week, the Bad Girls single moved from 18 to 16. There you go, Donna Summer, eh? Welcome to the show for a start. Thank you. And uh, I believe you're a very good friend of Donna Summer's. I am. And um, what an amazing looking mate lady that she is. Yeah, she's one of the, I think, one of the greatest new female vocalists in uh, music. She crosses over where uh, it's between uh, dramatic rock and uh, disco and the whole scene. Now, she wears so many clothes and sort of looks so good, and yet you've now got an image, especially from the film critics, get used to it with that red jumper and yeah. the, the fan blowing. As it is now. Yeah, um, I see that, man. Yeah. Can you tell us how sort of like you, you came about with that image, you know, and how you did that film clip? Accident. I had my hair was too long in my eyes, and they said, I, "We can't see your eyes, so uh, we'll put this fan on like this, and then it's out of my eyes, ain't it?" You know. And, and I believe the same guy that actually did the film clip did uh, the Queen's film clip, Bruce Gars. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, he's real good. There's some cats out there now. You know, it's not just music anymore. It's, as a matter of fact, it's uh, the point where it's production and lights and staging and. Guys like this are responsible for making this kind of stuff happen. Well, this the guy's up there, actually. The no, this <laughs> no. guy right here. No, no. What do you think, you know? So he, uh, we get lights and special effects, and it makes the music come off much better, because well. it's, it's more than just lyrics now, it's production. Now, you didn't bring your red jumper over, I believe. Didn't bring it because I said to myself, hey, I wore it once, let's wear something else. Yeah? I think everyone around town's wearing red jumpers, so it's probably just as well you didn't. I mean, when Rod came out, they all started getting into leopard skin. Ever uh, been into leopard skin? Not recently. No? I no. oh, see, right. Listen, there's one group, we're going to come back later and talk about your music and that. There's one group that um, I believe that you've, you've seen the film clip and you really like them. It's great. So would you like to enjoy Very it? good. I want to bring on right now My Sex live in the studio. No fake, but you don't care.
All right. I know it's a bit cold down here, but I believe you're having a very much of a California summer up in Noosa. So watch out and don't get sunburned. Right now, here's 10cc with Graham Goldman, Sunburn. Good. Um, that lady driving that car. Farrah Fawcett Major. This is indeed. Actually, that's from the movie. And uh, your hair, you know? Yeah, She's sort of like, they all, they all talk about your hair and her hair. I read somewhere where they, uh, they say we have the same hair, but uh, I don't think she's, she looks a little better than I do. Yeah? Yeah. Now, forgetting it's images important. at the moment, um, a lot of people could think in this country you're sort of like, like the knack, an overnight success. But in fact, you've been writing songs since you've been around about 17 or something, haven't you? I, I, I figured out when the Beatles came out, I said if I couldn't be a chick, which I'm glad I'm not, but I mean, uh, I have to write my own because I couldn't be in the band, of course, and so I eventually hope I would make it by writing my own songs. I'd get used to it and right. what have you. And that was what it was at for me. Now, how many albums have, in fact, you recorded now? Well, I was a studio musician. I've been on lots of records as a guitarist. Right. Which was my main. Your first love is, is guitar, isn't it? That's what I do. I was yeah. a guitarist. I didn't have any dreams of being a singer. And then I decided that I got tired of playing everybody else's album. I decided to sing and make my own, own records. Mm. And uh, a company like Warner Brothers saw that and right. let me sing a song. Now, you're very much like another guy, Eddie Money, and you sort of almost got the same sort of histories. It's sort of like New York, San Francisco, hanging same out. Same part of town. Yeah. I used to see him come out of his apartment when I came out of mine to get the paper. Yeah. It wasn't our paper somebody else's and you both sort of had chart successes over the last say eight or nine months just yes you know. yes yeah. has it ever been frustrating no i don't i don't look at it like that i mean you know i i just figured that uh we're just both lucky to be happening right well, i've got to say get used to it is one of the best songs for this year it's been Thank a fantastic you. I appreciate that. hey now listen there's one group that i think that is going to do big business they're a group called voyager this is a sensational film clip and if you'd like to introduce it right now we'll go into it we're ready for it halfway hotel this is great Cross the 
Great. You know, I was out hanging out here in your country for a while ago with a friend of mine named Steve Hans, and we went out and we saw a group called the Australian Crawl. And when you know the knack, of course, it happened like you wouldn't believe here. And they're supporting them as an opening act. And the lead singer's out here doing it for you. He's got broken arms from a car accident. They're gonna do your hit called Beautiful People. Check them out. John Stewart is huge in America. He was part of a famous American group called the Kingston Trio, which were like like, like the Beatles in, this, in maybe the 50s, late 50s, early 60s before they came out. I used to work with his brother named Michael Stewart, and I did an album with him in 1973 in America. Right now, we're gonna bring on his hit, Gold.
We're gonna have a group now called the Angels. They got a real high energy singer. You dig high energy singers, don't you? I mean, cats that make all the moves, the microphone, the whole scene. Here's their hit, Mr. Damage. There's a band that Paul McCartney thinks is one of the greatest bands in, in England, and they're called UK Squeeze. Nick Lowe and Elvis Costello wanted to produce them, and they said, hey, and they're called, and this is a song they get up right now. Check it out, it's called Cool for Cats. <laughs> Sweeney's is doing 90 cause they've got the work to go They get a gang of villains in a shed up at Heathrow They're counting out the fivers when the air cuffs lock again In and out I once were with the numbers on their names It's funny how the missus always looks a bleeding same And meanwhile at the station there's a couple of likely lads Who swear like as your father and they're very cool for cats, they're cool for cats I'm seeing my reflection, I'm looking slightly rough I fancy this, I fancy that, I wanna be so flash I give a little muscle and I spend a little cash But all I get is bitter and a nasty little rash And by the time I'm sober I've forgotten what I've had And everybody tells me that it's cool to be a cat Cool for cats
questions as she hangs onto the wall. I kiss her for the first time and then I take her home. I'm invited in for coffee and I give the dog a bone. She likes to go to discuss but she's never on her own. I said I'll see you later and I'll give her some old chat. But it's not like they on the TV when it's cool for cats, it's cool for cats. Australia had never heard of the Knack, but in their homeland America, the Knack were rocketing towards a chart-busting record for their debut album, Get the Knack. In just seven weeks, this album sold one million copies, placing them firmly in the number one position across America. And judging from this week's chart reaction here, the same thing is going to happen in Australia. Doug Figure's got a quote. If you don't know what Diddy What Diddy means, don't mess with it. Prescott Miles, Bert Bear, Bruce Gary and Doug Figure know what it means, and they're in Australia to prove it. So here's Molly with the knack. Well, hold on, it is not often that we can introduce the number one group in America and have them on the stage. Hold on. Oh, please, please. Prescott, will you take up and stand up and take a bow? This is Prescott. And Burton, Hello. Bruce, <laughs> and Doug. Hello. Well, now that we've got all that all over and done with, yes. um, and over being serious and for a moment, uh, one could say that you're an overnight success, and with all this scribe here, like, I, I mean, would... that's one week, one week of press, etc., etc., and this one here, Get the Knack, number one album, and I believe now the number one single with Moana Sharona. That's right. Well, then people could say it's an overnight success. But, they could, but I would Looking back, and knowing that you've written songs for, what, about five, six, seven years now, is it? Uh, probably longer. Yeah. Together, me and Burton have written songs for about five years. Yeah. And people sort of, and I know you get upset about, say, people say, well, you know, they must have cashed in on this thing or wrote the songs yeah. in a day, et cetera, et cetera. But in fact, some of the songs on the album were written back around about five Yeah, years, Good Girls ago. Don't uh, was yeah. written about six years ago. Right. Uh, that's What the Little Girls Do is about four and a half right. years old. My Sharona, when did you write that? Uh, after I met Sharona. Yeah, <laughs> I see. Right, well, <laughs> me, and Burton, that. me and Burton wrote that yeah. one. He, he actually had the rhythm for a long time, and right. we didn't know what to do with it, and then I met this girl. And, now listen, going into the, album itself, with it. Bruce, <laughs> into the album itself, and uh, uh, Mike Chapman, who's had amazing success, I believe you recorded the album in two weeks, flat. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah? a little less than that, actually. Nine days recording, two days mixing. Yeah? A couple of days screwing around. Two days. <laughs> right. Two days with his wife. Yeah. <laughs> but but, uh, but I, I sort of gather the fact of, like, with the Eagles and, and like, Fleetwood Mac spending, like, months and months in the studios, um, how come only two weeks? Well, rock and roll, if you're a rock and roll band and you yeah. play live, you should get it we down. don't have Stevie Nicks. <laughs> yeah, really? We'd probably that would, stretch it out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That would distract us, yes. Now, listen, um, going into the, the fact that it is the number one album, the number one single, I mean, does it worry you now, the pressure that's put on you? Nah. Nah? Nah. The There's no pressure. It's just rock and roll. It's only rock and roll. Now, listen, I like very, it. You made a very interesting <laughs> remark yesterday about music itself, about how critics tend to put labels on music, which you hate, I, I believe. And you were talking about uh, music as sort of like the base of your role, isn't it? Can you just sort of explain that again? Because it was very interesting to hear you say this. Well, it was... Uh, the, the comments were... Some people say that there's an audience uh, hierarchy, you know? Mm. And it's sort of absurd, sort of like the Bay City Rollers audience is a, a lower audience than, say, an Elvis Costello audience. And that's right. absurd. It's, it's all rock and roll. And uh, we want to get everybody. Yeah. We want everybody to get the man. But you're more or less saying also that as, as a songwriter and as the success you've got at the moment, that you'll listen to anyone and That's you can right. enjoy music. That's for what right. It is. As long as yeah. it's good. Yeah. As long as the people that are doing it believe it. Right. That's right. Well, I've got to say it without any hype whatsoever, even though with all the scribe and hype, 
but you are one of the freshest bands. On this record alone, I think it's a sensational record. Yeah, it's pretty fresh. Um, yeah. Now, I noticed that you two write most of the songs, but you also have got what I gather now as a tribute, Heartbeat, which right. is the Buddy Holly uh, performance of um, the Norman Petty song. You're going to do one on each album, I believe, a tribute to certain people. Well, so sometimes sort of. if we it feel like it, you know. A song, that, yeah. song that fits us primarily. It's not Heartbeat's going to be a hit, you know. Your version of that's pretty good. <laughs> I shouldn't say it because of it. No, I think it will be, though. Oh, I hope so. We'd rather it's one <laughs> yeah, that we wrote. Knows. So. Actually, I saw you perform last night, and you look, I mean, not only do you look as if you're having a ball on stage, but... Uh, no, that really was after the show. No, you look as if you're having a ball on stage as well. <laughs> oh. You obviously sort of really do enjoy the music that you're doing. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, we wouldn't do it if we didn't take it. Yeah. It's not worth doing. No. Yeah. Anybody who's ever gotten on a stage and played rock and roll for people know it's, it's really fun. I can't believe people who do it and don't like it. Now, just briefly, again, I was talking to Roger before about images. Your image is sort of very sort of back to sort of the basics of things. No sort of color lights, just right. you know the black and white, and the whole the whole back of the album cover is the same. Right, know? right. It's 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 the feeling of the music. It's very simple. It's uh, it's real. It's uh, basic. It's rock and roll. All right. Well, listen. Uh, I'm going to talk about the album, and I hope that you're going to sort of get over to your set in one piece. Uh, so listen, while I rave about this album, over you go. All right. Now listen. This album itself. Has, uh, has been doing enormous business. I don't have to go into the whole, the whole scribe because I think that you've heard my Sharona. It is heading for number one in this country, no doubt at all. And uh, <laughs> within the album, as I said before, there are some great tracks. There's also a track called Lucinda, and you should have a listen to this. We've actually had this, got this on tape. We've been working overtime today, boys, stop it. And let's have a look at Lucinda. Great track. Jolly good, jolly good. Yay! It's a great track, and as I say, like there's many great tracks on this particular album. Heartbeat, which is the old Buddy Holly song, is sensational. It goes, it goes over so well on stage. I'm talking about uh, the knack being on stage. Tonight, in Sydney, they're going to perform at the Horton Pavilion, so you must not miss out on that. Uh, Tuesday night at the Manly Fix in Sydney. On the 15th, Wednesday, the Stage Door Tavern in Sydney. The Thursday, the Ambassador Club, Newcastle. Mm, Newcastle, how about that? And Friday, back in Melbourne for their final performance at the Bombay. So if you've got a chance to go and see the knack, then I suggest you sort of buzz along because they're a group really worth seeing. And last night, as I say, we just went off our minds. Meanwhile, back in the studios, live on stage for the first time in Australia, we've got The Knack with the number one single in America, with the number one album in America, heading for number one here with this great track called My Sharona. Here we go, The Knack.
Wow, how about that? The Knack and my Sharona. And speaking of the Knack, they almost debuted in the national top ten. But one thing's for sure, they'll be there next week. This week, the queen of the discos, Donna Summer's Hot Stuff, is number ten. Boogie Wonderland is now dropping out of the top ten in all states. Earth, Wind and Fire's highest peak on the national chart was at number six. Brisbane seems to be the state breaking new music in Australia this year, and One Way Ticket is no exception. While this song is on its way out of the northern chart, it's still on the rise in other states. Queensland scores again. I was made for loving you went up the charts all over Australia, but the biggest jump for Kiss was eight places in Brisbane. Pop music is steady at number two in Sydney and number three in Adelaide, but it's now falling in all other states. This week, M is number six nationally. Another song falling nationally is Bright Eyes. Art Garfunkel was two last week and is number five this week. His album, Fate for Breakfast, is also at number five. Ring My Bell has leveled out in Sydney at number two and in Adelaide at number five. Meanwhile, it's still climbing charts across the country for a neat award. If it wasn't for the knack, up there, Kazali would have been the chart buster of the week. This little ditty jumped from 17 to three for Mike Brady. Cool for Cats might have made it to number one this week if Racy Some Girls had been released on an album. But the UK Squeeze still have a chance next week. And now, it's back to our special guests. I don't know if you guys have met Roger, right? Roger? Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Look, there's not much. There's not much to say except that um, it's not often we have like two top uh, international acts on our show, and I just would like to get back here and applaud you like the rest. Come on! Again, thanks for coming on the show. Really, yeah. It's been good. Oh, thanks, God. thanks, Rog. And uh, best of luck with the live gigs. I know it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait for the next album. Now we've done the other ones again. <laughs> and Roger, you've got to come back soon and do live performances. January. All right. Well, listen, we might as well go out with the number one record, which is, if you'd like to introduce it, Some, Some Girls, Girls by Race. I turn away from you I see those looks you're sending me Is this the way it's meant to be? It's something we should talk about Just give me time to work it out Some girls will Some girls won't Some girls need a lot of loving it up Some girls don't I know I've got the fever But I don't know why Some say they will Obviously, I'll fall heavily. I've seen those looks you're sending me. This is the way it's meant to be. There's nothing left to talk about. Oh, how I wish you'd work it out. Some girls will. Some girls won't. Some girls need a lot of loving it up. Some girls don't. Well, I know I've got the fever, but I don't know why.
Slowly I turn away from you Some girls will Some girls won't